So for the month of August, I was basically quiet on all social media platforms here on YouTube, everywhere else, because I was so loud in person doing ministry outside of this. I work as a campus minister. I work with college students. And August is the time of like gearing up for the year and like forming student leaders and heading out on campus to meet the new students. So this month has been crazy, exciting, super busy, especially the last 10 days of the month. We're like the first days of move-in and the first week of classes. And what we do is we do a like super intense 10 days of outreach to start the year where we pray for an hour in the morning. We go out on campus for three hours, just giving stuff away, chasing down college students, trying to meet them to then invite them to an event every single night. So it was like 10 straight days of like 12 plus hour days, 15 hour days, 10 straight of those just crazy busy, exhausting but thrilling and exciting at the same time. And I, I, I was just finding myself over the course of those 10 days that I just kind of wrapped up a few days ago. I've took the weekend to rest and I'm, I'm ready to sit down and like kind of debrief this. I was wondering over those 10 days, I found myself pondering the question, when did this happen for me? I'm like, how did I, how did I get here? where I am so on fire for Jesus Christ that I am out here putting 15 plus hour days willingly for like living a dream job, essentially doing this kind of ministry. How did I get here? There are so many people of the 25,000 college students on my campus, only a few were with me as student leaders who are out there on campus doing the hard work, working the long days. How did I get here to the point of being on fire for the faith? And I kind of want, as I was thinking through like, what kind of specific things were there, things that I did to get to that point? Because the, the proposal we're trying to make to the college students is like, this is the best possible life you can live. Life with Jesus Christ is a great adventure. There's nothing like it. This is abundance of, and fullness of life. Um, so if that's true, then I should want to be all in, like super fired up, ready to go, ready to proclaim that gospel to everyone else. And, and I got there somehow, some way. And, and how? And I came with like five things as like things that I did in order to get there. And I want to preface this by that like getting to the point of just being on fire for the faith is a movement of the Holy Spirit of God working in our lives and not just something that I can necessarily conjure up for myself. Like it is not my doing that I was brought up in the Catholic faith and that I was placed in the positions I was placed in and like given the certain inspirations uh, that I was given in like saying yes to the Lord. A lot of this is just like God gifts certain people with certain amounts of enthusiasm and zeal and faith. But what do we do? How can we put ourselves in an environment where we can receive those promptings from the Lord and effectively respond to them so as to be on fire for the faith. Here are five ways. First off, number one is to surround ourselves with people who are on fire with the faith. Like this is not the kind of thing, again, that we can conjure up for ourselves. And a lot of this is just being able to see the authentic witness of someone else who's doing it and living it. And that gives us permission to do it ourselves. And we can't do this alone, however far along the journey we are. I have other people who I am around who are pumped up for Jesus Christ and who encourage me and run the race with me. So we can't do it alone, especially at the beginning when we're trying to, if the thought is, I want to be on fire, I want to do what that guy is doing. Like we need to see other people who are doing it. So find other people, like my individuals, people around your age. So if you're like a college student, young adult, Find a Newman Center on campus or, or find a young adult group of people. Join a Bible study. Do Find a group of people who are like really living it out and invest in them. Be their friends. Walk with them on the journey. Number two, and when I'm thinking back through like what was it for me, this one's huge, is do church things on more than just Sunday. Like as many other days throughout the week that you can incorporate faith-related groups or worship nights or, or Bible studies or small groups, whatever it is that you can do outside of Sunday, because I think most of us grow up in the faith and it's just like we go to church on Sunday and that's like my one hour that I devote to the faith. The more that you can spread that out and do that multiple times throughout the week as often as possible. Like I remember when I really started to like go deeper into my faith in high school is when I had like a Monday night group that I went to. And then there was also a Wednesday night group that I went to. And then when I went off to college, it was a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Sunday, Saturday, every single day of the week, I had some kind of group, some kind of church related thing that I was going to. The more that we can incorporate that throughout the week 
And not just Sunday, it infiltrates the rest of our lives. And it begins to become something that's not segregated. Like it's so easy for when you just spend one hour at the church building on Sunday for it to be separate from your life. But when you do it every day, when you have different things going on in different places with different people, and it's all centered around Jesus, it becomes integrated into my very way of life. Number three is to go and teach the faith. Put yourself in a position where you have to like explain and teach and impart the faith to other people. I actually found, I think this is actually one of the biggest things. I remember what it started for me is like helping out with a youth group or teaching Sunday school or, and then it turned into doing this. Like this for me has maybe been one of the biggest things for me and like going deeper into the faith because part of it is when you have to teach something to someone else, you have to know it and you have to believe it. Like this, like for me to sit in front of a camera and like proclaim this message with hundreds of videos for thousands of viewers across the world, I got to know my stuff and I got to believe that it's true. And it's the same thing for if you got just like a small group of high schoolers, you got like five high schoolers sitting in a room, they're expecting you to know your stuff. So there's like this pressure, this responsibility to know it. And also this feeling of like, I'm a, in like not authentic and disingenuous if I don't actually believe this. And the more that I know it, the more that I can come to believe it. So whatever that is, whatever churches always are looking for volunteers to lead youth groups and stuff like that. Or if it's like starting a blog or starting a, a YouTube channel or like just posting stuff on social media, talk with your friends, start up a Bible study, do something where you got to be a teacher of the faith. So you have to know it and you have to believe it. Kind of tied in with that is number four, which is commit an hour of your day, every single day, no ifs, ands, or buts, to prayer and study of the faith. And probably this one should come before number three is like that this is involved in if I'm going to teach it, I got to like actually come to know about Jesus, but not only know about Jesus, but to know him in prayer. But uh, I think actually my experience was that I was thrust into a place of teaching and leading. And from there, I said, oh, shoot, I got to know my stuff. I got to really buy into this because I'm the leadership figure. Um, so I think it, it can go either way. But for sure, number four is like, if this is going to be a well-integrated part of my life, then I got to I gotta commit time to Jesus. I got to get to know about Jesus, but not only know about him and study, but get to know him. It's a personal relationship with Jesus. And that is formed in the intimate place of prayer. And we can't, we can't get it without that. And lastly, number five, and this is just kind of like a, a little one that maybe isn't necessary, but I think back on my own experience is like to make the faith part of your like personal, external, public, personal brand. And, and this is kind of a, a vague one, but like, do, you, do other people know when they look at you that you are a Christian? And for me, it was something like back in high school, I started wearing shirts that had like Bible verses on them or stuff related to the faith. And it was just kind of an external portrayal of like, I'm Christian and I'm not afraid to wear it on my sleeve, literally. Um, or if it's something like, like this, and then I started posting stuff on social media about it, which I think is probably one of the easiest ways. I would say those are probably the two easiest ways. Like start just getting like Christian shirts or something, wear it on you and like post it on social media and stuff. Just, just like talk about it. Let people know that you are Christian because what it does is when you own up to it, then there is some like responsibility that you have a reputation to uphold. Like if you're going to talk the talk, you better walk the walk. So the more that I think if we can make it just a little bit of like externally, this is who I am. This is my personal brand. I'm bought into this. Then it helps internally. If we do it externally, it helps internally for us to actually buy in. So those are my five things. And the sun keeps going in and out behind the clouds. So that's why the lighting keeps changing in this room. But those are five things that I would suggest in order to like grow and catch fire for the faith. To surround yourself with people who are on fire. Um, to do church stuff more than just on Sundays. To put yourself in a position to teach. To commit, no ifs, ands, or buts, to an hour every single day of prayer and study and to make it some kind of external part of your personal brand. Um, because again, the hope, in the, the hope is that you desire to be on fire for the faith. Like there, there's something about um, Christianity that seems less appealing to the lukewarm person. And there's far too many people in the church who are lukewarm about the faith. And they give the faith a bad rap. 
because it doesn't look like it's anything exciting and it doesn't feel to those people like there's anything anywhere deeper to go. But there is just like inexhaustible mystery and depth and richness to the faith when we can, when we can catch the fire. I promise you everything changes when you become on fire for Jesus Christ. So ask God, ask the Holy Spirit to come infuse you with the fire of faith and divine life and put yourself in these positions. Do these five things and I promise you everything changes.